The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. Welcome to this episode of Pit Life Barbecue. Gather around the pit with your hosts, Johnny Mags and Messy Mike. Let's talk barbecue. What's up, everybody? Coming to you live from the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe in Salem, New Hampshire. It's the Pit Life Barbecue Podcast, where we talk everything barbecue and a lot of other topics that you normally talk around the pit. As always, I'm joined by Messy Mike. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Oh, in the basement. In the basement. In the basement. Figure the, the levels of sound are better down here in North Minnesota. You know, it would really bother me. And I couldn't go outside because it's raining. I know. It just started raining up here. What the hell happened? It was beautiful all day. I don't know. That's uh, New England. Give it five minutes. It'll change. Yeah, I know. I know. Hell, a lot of rain recently, though. <laughs> yeah, hell, Saturday it was uh, Saturday it was snowing in the morning, then it went to rain, yeah. and it was, what is this all about? Yep, yep. Oh. And, uh, and first, uh, you know, I know we're, we're viewing all over the place, but um, Gronkowski went to the Buccaneers, so just wanted to, you know, share the news. I'm sure you've got, you guys have heard as well. Who? Huh? Who? Rob Gronkowski. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Who? Just like that Tom guy everyone keeps talking about. He's a, he's a tight end that doesn't like to play a lot. Well, they, he's the tight end that won me a bet with Daddy Dutch. Oh, there you go. Yeah, we had we might have had a little wager that we can't speak of right now on the uh, Mass Singer. He uh, claimed it was The Rock. I knew it was Gronk, and we put a little something down on How did it. he think it was the rock? The whole world knew it was Gronk. It was something yeah, in exactly. one of the one of the clues. It's, Kent says it claimed it said the U. So the only one that's kind of his side is the rock. The rock and he yeah. went to the U, but it's neither here nor there. I'm glad you won yep. that bet. Oh, I did, and I can't wait for, wait for to reap the rewards. To rub it in like oh, a it's good a, sauce? Oh, it's a complete... It's it's a, a thing of beauty that's going to happen. I can't <laughs> say right now because you're putting the final touches on it. All right, but update us when you when oh, you are able to. Believe please. me, Thank we you. will. Be we will. Um, nice. Oh man! So today I'm very excited. I have followed this gentleman for a while. Him and his son, who is a hell of a cooker in his own right. Um. Ladies and gentlemen, from Blues Hog, Joey Machado. How are y'all doing today? Thank y'all so much for having me. Thank you, Joey, for taking some time. It was very, really appreciate this. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, Joey, let's start um, for people who don't exactly know you. Um, Who is Joey Machado, and how how did you come into your barbecue journey? I got you. Well, um, for those who don't know, I basically, I'm in Texas, central Texas. I'm kind of in between San Antonio and uh, Houston, Texas, you know, kind of rural area. Uh, Always grew up in um, sales and marketing type of deal, Uh, but I have always competed in barbecue. So I was a barbecue competitor competitor rather for uh, 20 plus years. Um, Always, you know, did local little stuff and you know we just kind of our passion grew into uh doing more and more in the barbecue world um we probably wound up seriously into barbecue business uh probably about five years ago uh when i kind of started we were doing competition but i was also in in oil field uh oil sales and gas and that type of deal and uh started doing diversifying into doing some catering, uh, oil field catering type of deal, um, needed more products, more supplies type of deal. And, and we actually made a relationship with, uh, Travis Kiner, who is the uh, owner of uh, B and B charcoal products. And, um, so I kind of, it was a transition time. I was trying to decide if I was going to go do barbecue, uh, catering full time or, you know, continue to keep it as a hobby. Um, at that same time, uh, Western wood products, uh, had sold out and, uh, to the Duraflame brand. 
And so with me being that marketing guy that I always was, um, I started having a little bit more in-depth conversations with uh, the guys with B&B and, uh, you know, just trying to tell them that, you know, there was a window open um, to where there was a lot of guys who uh, weren't feeling as loyal to the Western brand. And uh, I thought there was a chance to grow, grow this brand, you know, the B&B brand. And uh, as we entered into that portion of the deal, I started kind of marketing for this company, doing trade shows, you know, branding everywhere. Uh, not on the payroll, just, you know, we were trading it out. You know, he was giving me charcoal and, you know, I was out there branded for him. And uh, it's kind of how we first got our first kind of sponsorships kind of going. Um, and then it just kind of evolved into eventually I got on, you know, they asked me to come on full time. Um, you know, they said that, you know, I asked them how big they want to get. They said, we're ready to kind of launch. Um, I jumped in there and you know, I think the first year I took the brand to, uh, Memphis in May, the American Royal, the Jack, you know, we took it to every big contest, guys who'd never put eyes on that product. And we made a lot of great uh, relationships that year, uh, joining National Barbecue Association. Um, at the same time, right around that, my boy, Ty, who uh, at that time, he was about 11, 12 years old. I had already had him grooming. He was cooking contests by himself. Uh, he was uh, actually cooking on a Yoder smoker. I bought him a Yoder pellet cooker because he could cook. He just couldn't manage a fire. And at the same time, while he was doing well, kind of on, in his own little right, um, the uh, a Food Network opportunity came up. And uh, so Ty, I applied for Ty. He didn't know until he basically you know, started doing interviews with Food Network. Um, then all of a sudden, he got on the show. Um, he had great success on the show, didn't win the show, but then we found out later on too, that it's not about what you can cook. It's about, you know, the cute cuteness and, you know, it's a show. They're trying to get people to watch the show. So, um, exactly. And, uh, Ty's a guy that he don't say a lot. He just, his cooking does his talking. Um, and so, you know, he wasn't that kid that's shown out there, you know, as being like, this could be our spokesperson, you know, type of deal. Um, the kid was just very serious about cooking and winning and, you know, that type of deal. And he lasted six out of eight rounds. So, I mean, in his own right, it was good. Um, they never let him cook on what he, you know, what, what he actually cooked on. Say it was desserts and, you know, appetizers and all this other stuff. So he never made it to the barbecue round. And I always joked with him. I said, well, I'm kind of glad that you didn't get there and you got kicked off before. Um, because you can always defend, you know, everything else you've done barbecue wise, you know, with trophies and, you know, all this other stuff that you got. And they, they made them cook on like an electric smoker, you know, on that, on that deal. So I was like, that's like totally, you know, if you would have gone out anytime you wanted to do it on something that you're not familiar with, opposed to something that you're, you know, that's your bread and butter type of deal. So anyways, uh, we kind of went from there. Um, again, like I said, we're, we're because of the relationships that I've kind of built in the industry, uh, doing what I did with B&B, building the brand into what it is today. Um, and then also uh, the relationships that we kind of got while we were, uh, while Ty was filming. I met a couple of people that are pretty hardcore in the barbecue industry. Uh, Leslie Rourke Scott being one of those uh, who's out of Yazoo City, Mississippi. Um, they were in the game for a long time and her son, Jacob and Ty kind of hit it off and they were big on the uh, barbecue festival circuit. So soon after we filmed the show, they started inviting us to go out to, you know, Q and Lou and, and uh, barbecue block party, New York, uh, Windy city smoke out Chicago. And we started to kind of go. And as soon as we went, you know, we met guys like Myron Mixon and we met Mo Kason. We met, you know, uh, all Brad and, and Brooke Orson. Um, so we met all these bigger players in the game. At the same time, I joined NBBQA, became, you know, part of that board. Um, and then I was, again, around those same people all the time. So we were just kind of very blessed, I guess, to fall into the right place at the right time scenario and um, got to build relationships. And that's what this industry is about is about industry relationships and not burning bridges. Um, it's super, super important in this deal. You know, there's a lot of guys who want to go out there and go, oh, but we want to get, 
you know, we're looking for sponsorship for our team. Awesome. You know, who are you trying to get sponsorship from? Do you use their products? You know, if you don't use their products, the last thing that people want to under, you know, hear from someone is going, yeah, I think that, you know, if you give me some of your product, I'll start branding for it. Well, if you don't believe in the product, I don't want you pushing the product, you know, so it's gotta be something, there's gotta be some history there. And so, you know, I've kind of taken it, made it a point, you know, to help a lot of people who are looking for that, you know, for looking at that deal. There's, there's only going to be one Mo case on, there's only going to be one, uh, Malcolm Reed, there's only going to be one Cosmo, you know, uh, people can't come into this thing and, and expect to be like so-and-so, you know, there's only one diva, you know, um, Mm -hmm. and uh, the days of creating those barbecue influencers like that, I think it's kind of over, you know, uh, it's, it's not that it's no one else is going to have success in it. It's just, nobody's going to have that type of success. You know, Pitmasters was huge, you know, at that time. That's where Mo and, and uh, Myron, you know, really made that mark. Tuffy Stone, you know, Ernest Cervantes, he was at my house this past weekend. We were doing some filming. Um, you know, that's a guy who probably the first Texas guy and the first Hispanic Texas guy, I guess, yep. to really make a mark in, in the barbecue scene, national barbecue scene. We got a lot of great cookers in Texas. But there's very, very few, a very small uh, majority of those who cook outside their comfort zone go do KCBS. Um, if you want to be known in this game, you have to cook KCBS. There's no two ways about it. You know, you've got to be at that rule. You've got to be at that jack, you know, that type of deal. If you have the opportunities to go. Barbecue is a very expensive sport. Uh, it's an expensive hobby. Oh, for you know? sure. A uh, lots of guys who you know have real teams. When I when I was cooking, I didn't have a team. Mm-hmm. It was me buying beer for twenty guys who would come show up and drink my beer. You know, I didn't have guys who you know helped me set up, break down, buy meat. You know, all that other type of deal. Um, now I think the game has changed a little bit. I think people take it a little bit more seriously. You know, there's a lot more money involved in you know, the equipment, the proteins, the injections, the, you know, whatever. Um, And I I think the game has changed, you know, but there's 10 times the amount of contests every weekend as well. You know, for us here in Texas, uh, I think you can pretty much say that Christmas and Thanksgiving are probably the only days that there are not a cook-off, you know, on that weekend. Other than that, I mean, from bell to bell, I mean, there's, if you want to go cook, you can go do one within 30, 40 minutes of the house. Um, I love competing. I just don't have the time to compete anymore. Like I used to. Um, so that's why I kind of fell into doing a lot with SCA. So love SCA quick cooks. Um, you know, we've had a lot of success, both I've had success. Ty's had a lot of success with it. Um, you know, we lucked out and started doing a lot of stuff with uh, World Food Championships. Um, that's another really, really <clears throat> cool avenue now, you know, that gives uh, not only chefs, but a lot of cooks opportunities to get out there and, and cook with some of the best of the best from coast to coast and the world for that matter. Um, but I mean, really in a yeah. nutshell, you know, we, we kind of fell into it. Uh, we made a good name. Uh, we, we helped some brands grow into something really great. Um, I left b and May. Well, actually the last day of Memphis in May um, last year. Um, that's when we, we had our final, um, that, that's when we decided to call it quits, put it that way. Um, when we did that, I kind of left and uh, was very unsure if I was going to stay in the charcoal market uh, because I didn't want to, I didn't want it to seem like I was going in to try to go crush them or, you know, anything like that. Um, But in the meanwhile, I had already been in conversations with, uh, with Tim Shear, with uh, Blues Hog. We'd already been friends. We'd already been doing some stuff together. Um, They just weren't kind of prepared for me to, you know, kind of make a jump with them yet. Um, In the meanwhile, uh, Sebastian with uh, Fogo Charcoal, uh, we got to know each other, you know, have some good conversations. Uh, I took a small stint with him to help him kind of promote the brand, blow the brand up a little bit. And then kind of in the middle of me kind of doing that, uh, Tim came back around and goes, Hey man, you know, I think we're ready to, 
you know, let's, let's do this, you know, and again, Tim Shear, uh, for those who don't know him, um, tallest man in barbecue. Um, he is a, uh, he, he's a hell of a guy. Um, he is, I don't know how he does everything that he does. You know, he's got a, a, uh, lawnscaping company that is a huge kind of commercial company. Um, that's, I think what he kind of grew everything with, um, you know, he acquired blues hog, he acquired gateway brand. And, uh, you know, now the blues hog brands are in, we're going to say they're in a lot of grocery. They're in a lot of, uh, ACE hardwares. They're in a lot of specialty stores, but it's a well-respected product, well-respected brand. Um, everything that he's got, you know, is, it's a great product. Uh, so I had a lot of, uh, I, I really liked the product going into it. And that was very, very easy for me to make that transition because again, even when I was at BNB, that was the product I used. Um, it was very local to me. I mean, the plant was 40 minutes from my house. Um, you know, it, it's very easy for me to be enamored with the product and be able to get out there and push it and get people to help me push that. Because that's where my success has been is is by using my relationships in this industry to help me get you know people to to promote these products you know but again it's not a snake oil deal it's it's true blue um, selling really good products you know that are going to help you whether it's in your backyard or in a competition. Nice, awesome, awesome. Uh- Hold that thought there, Joey. We're going to take a quick, about a minute break, and uh, we'll be right back. All right. Well, that was fast. Oh, and uh... Attention, cigar smokers, or even friends of a cigar smoker. If you're looking to relax with a nice premium cigar or looking for a great gift for a cigar smoker, this is the gift that keeps on giving. Our friends at TwoGuysCigars.com have created the Cigar of the Month Club. For just $24.99 per month, you or your friend will receive four different premium handmade cigars every month, and shipping and handling is included. Go to twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com, and go to the Cigar of the Month Club. You can stop anytime because there's no contract, but you won't because this is a tremendous deal for our listeners. Go to twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com and click the Cigar of the Month Club. At the same time, if you want to learn about the cigars you receive each month, you can smoke along with them on their own podcast called The Cigar Authority. Sit back, relax, and enjoy a nice premium cigar from our friends at twoguyscigars.com. And we are back. Um, Mike? Yo. Um... Kent, Daddy Dutch has a uh, has a question for you. Sure. Is that the Down Go Frazier room? Yes, it is. <laughs> this is the couch. This the, is the couch. Yes, the couch <laughs> wound up going sideways, and so did you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. So, Joey. Um, yeah. So you you know you've you've been with Fogo, you've been with B and B, now you're with Blues Hog. Um, it. I mean, a lot of people thought. You actually owned B and B charcoal because yep. that's how much you were yes. out there at events and pushing them. Um, right. It almost seems like you you bring a brand to the point that you know you're you're happy with, or you know you've you brought them from this level to you know up mm-hmm. here, and then you you know you almost move on to do the same mm-hmm. thing with another mm-hmm. brand that kind of needs a little help. Correct. Um, I mean, it's been amazing. I mean, I I cooked with. Uh, your son, Ty, I believe in Tennessee at the MBBQA with Ken yeah. Adair. Exactly. Um, you know, and you were like a, a charcoal monster. Why, <laughs> why charcoal and not like sauces, rubs? Um, you know, what, what, what does charcoal, you know, get you excited? Um, I tell you, honestly, it wasn't my first choice. Uh, put it that way. You know, um, in everything I've ever done, I've, I've always done kind of like a wish list of, you know, people I wanted to work with or, or, you know, brands I wanted to kind of get tied into. And uh, we actually had a, a really good relationship with Yoder Smokers. And um, we, you know, we, we, we talked a little bit about maybe doing some stuff with Yoder Smokers and it just, it was opportunity. Um, there was no opportunity like there was with that charcoal market at the time. 
and the growth, I could just see, you know, I was already seeing this runway that was just like wide open. And, um, you know, at the time there was so much turmoil in the industry that, uh, you know, it's, that's the thing that was the most viable to do. Now, the other thing was, is when I first joined B&B, it was going to be a long-term opportunity. You know, this was a family owned company. I really, really liked the fact that they were a family owned company. Um, You know, they originally had no intentions of doing anything but grow that company. And uh, so initial talks that we had was, you know, I was working for a piece of that company. And um, that's the reason that I, I put the time in that I did, that I, you know, was burning up the road like I did. Um, that was the intention. Um, unfortunately, as we moved and progressed through it and we built more and more into that, you know, built what that company was, uh, the company decided that wasn't the direction they wanted to go anymore. You know, they saw the opportunity to do more with big box stores. They got had brokers that were already involved, which the brokers wound up being the marketing company that came in who wanted the marketing company, wanted me to work with them to grow other brands that they had. And that's not what I was about. You know, it, it was about yeah. doing this. You know, I had an op- I had an option. I was either going to work with a marketing company or I wasn't, you know, and I didn't want to. That's not who I went to work for. I went to work for B&B. And uh, when that opportunity was not there anymore, that's when I decided to move on. You know, as soon as I left, actually that same day at the Royal, I had meetings with Royal Oak there at, I mean, at the, uh, at Memphis in May, you know, and we had, we had the meetings, we went to the headquarters and we got to talk and everything else. And the reason I took Fogo over Royal Oak was because I think the impression of me going to, straight to a brand like that, like a big Royal Oak like that, it would look really negative on me um, because it would look like I was going to go try to crush, you know, a brand, you mm-hmm. know, and that's mm-hmm. not what it was about. You know, it, it's again, and you could ask anybody that I had worked with before. Um, I talked to all my ambassadors when all this was going down before I ever made any announcements. And I told the guys, I was like, look, I'm fixing to make a move. If you want to stay, you can stay. If you want to go, you can go, you know, whatever it is. I helped a lot of guys who left me and be to go and uh, jump on board with Royal Oak and, you know, become those ambassadors. One of the, the big deals when I met with Royal Oak was I told them who was valuable in the industry and who wasn't as an ambassador. Because there's a lot of guys you can just pay and, um, and they'll promote your brand, you know. But again, if somebody shows up with another nickel, um, they're going to go and, and push that brand. And again, we're focused on doing stuff with backyard guys. You know, backyard guys are the ones who, who buy the product <coughs> and actually make the company money. Um, so again, getting back to your question, you know, why was it charcoal and not seasoning sauce and everything else? That's exactly why I'm where I am today. Um, because Tim is a diversified company. He's got cookers, he's got charcoal, he's got sauce, he's got seasoning, he's got everything. And the other thing too is Tim is a lot like me. He's got a vision on how we can tie this all together, you know. And again, I don't care if you're using a gateway, then I don't care if you're burning Western wood charcoal products or you're burning B&B or you're doing this or you like head country sauce, we'll use my other products we're in a position where we can be friends with everybody. And that's super, super important with me. Um, so again, there's no animosity anywhere. Um, I, this, I'm in a position now where I can be friends with everyone again. And, um, you know, cause there for a little while, you know, I had to kind of, I'd go to events and I, you know, have to stay away from them because they were on that deal, you know, and, and I had a lot of people when I made the change who didn't understand everything behind the scenes, you know, they were like, Oh, well, you know, it's, now you're over there and, you know, and we're over here and it's like two separate teams, you know? So we were all friends. It's not a big deal, you know? Um, but again, like I said, a lot of people just didn't understand, you know, what the underlying thing is. Um, but again, like I said, I, I love where I'm at right now. This is exactly where I want to be as far as, you know, being able to have all these opportunities to deal with all these individuals. I still get to do my same schedules as far as, going to all these events and, you know, all that other stuff, that's huge to me. 
Um, I'm more of a marketing guy than mm-hmm. I'm a sales guy, you know, and um, and that's that's where we're at today. Now, how long? Like, how long? Out of a year, how how many days out of a year are you on the road? So normally, um, year before last, I was 154 nights in a hotel. And that's not including, you know, when I slept in my truck and, you know, all that type of stuff. Um, last year, we tried to tone it down a little bit because I was getting a little, I was getting a little tired. Uh, you know, I have, uh, my big deal was, is I had two big trucks. Um, I had big trailers and, you know, and that was my branding going down the road and at events and, you know, whatever. Uh, I was always uh, very much of a um, kind of like a under the table marketer. You know, when we started with B&B, we didn't have a big budget. You know, I, I didn't have any budget, to be honest. You know, it was a new position. And I just started to go do stuff. You know, I'd show up at events, basically kind of uninvited, um, you know, and I would just start handing out product, you know. And, you know, people aren't going to use this stuff until they understand it, you know, type of deal. And that's how we kind of built it on. So, Um, this year when I joined up with Tim, you know, Tim had a brand new truck, brand new trailer, you know, he's like, yeah, we're ready to go. And I was like, man, I, I really don't want to do that anymore. You know, um, I said, I, I said, man, I want a van. And he's like, what are you talking about? I was like, no, seriously, I want a van. And, uh, Tim did, he got me a van. Uh, we've got it branded. Um, and I've seen pictures of the van. It's, it's shop. It's a shop looking van. When we had that conversation, he's like, "Oh, so you got to you want to put the Machado thing on this thing?" I was like, "Yeah, so I want a blacked out van, blacked out wheels, I want blacked out everything." And uh, but the thing was, we we actually we met in Houston at Houston Rodeo. Um, we had shipped down here like fourteen cans, and he brought me the van down with product. You know, that's when we officially got started. And uh, when we left that event you know i took the van home and literally we had 14 gateways in that thing and uh plus product plus everything else (laughs) and um we've got the van rigged out now um you know we're ready to go with that thing as soon as we can get back on the road again um here in texas it's been i'm going to say it's been fairly lax you know but we are a company that uh they they say that we're essential because we're you know in food service and that type of deal we actually are doing producing a uh, ready to eat meats right now. Um, and that's being launched here pretty soon. You know, it's going to the grocery, it's going to be on for online sales and all that, but it's probably one of the most fantastic products you've ever had, uh, you know, doing brisket and ribs and um, we've got turkey and uh, pork butts. And I mean, we're doing all kinds of stuff. So like I said, again, the brand's going to be expanding laterally. Um, mm-hmm. you're going to see a lot more products coming out of, uh, the brands as far as from Blues Hog and Gateway. The other thing with this is when I came on board, not only those two brands that I work for also basically work for, uh, barbecue league. So, and that's, you know, basically owned with, uh, with Brad and with Tim and you're seeing a lot of that stuff online right now, you know, doing the virtual contests and, you know, all that type of stuff. Um, this, I, I guess you're going to have to say is, you know, when I look at a guy like Tim, um, he is very, very, very involved in this business. So from one end to the other, you know, he's a competitor first, then he's a business owner, you know, so every product that he has, he uses, you know, from the gateway all the way to all his seasonings and sauces, um, you know, the charcoal products. Uh, we, we just recently, you know, because of this, of, of everything that's happening right now with uh, the what we're in, um, charcoal sales were, are like eight times what they normally are this time of year. Even though we're we're just entering into you know into um, into our our summer seasons, and you know we expect charcoal sales to be high. But right now, these are numbers like we've never experienced before, ever. And we got to a point to where, you know, as far as with our Blues Hog brand, you know, that's a charcoal that it's a U.S. made. It is a U.S. made product. It's made right there in Missouri, um, you know, and we were running to where we're kind of scraping the bottom, bottom of the barrel going, hey, we, we may be running out of charcoal here pretty soon. We may have to look at some backup measures just in case. 
And, you know, and I got on the phone and I got to call on all my people and I had charcoal from, you know, from Mexico and from South America and from, you know, all over the place, ready and lined up, ready to go. And um, this is the kind of guy that Tim is. Tim goes, you know what? That's awesome. But you know what? Because of what our product is, we're not going to we're not going to go down that road. We're going to wait and we're going to see what happens. And luckily, I mean, right at that same time, then it was like green flag. We're ready to go. We're, we're back in business again, you know, type of deal. And that's the kind of individual that he is. You know, there's a lot of companies right now that are U S made products that are not putting U S made product in the back, you know, because again, they, everyone scrambled, they had to, you know, make split decision, you know, they just brought in this South American product or this Mexico product, whatever it comes in in bulk and they're, or they're sending bags down to go get them filled or whatever. So, I mean, a lot of people may notice over these next couple months, because it's just product that's going to be hitting the shelves now is not going to be exactly what you used last time. It's going to be a little different, you know, and, and that's okay. It's only a temporary fix, you know, and you only had to do that for a short period of time. But again, I was very, very impressed with the decision that he made. He goes, I'd rather not sell anything than put something else that's not my product in the back. Yep. And, you know, and, and that's, and like I said, and that, that's what it's about, you know? And, um, but again, like I said, it, it's, I'm just, I'm very, very happy with where I'm at right now. And, and I'm so excited about what's fixing to come because, you know, everything that people relate to this brand um, they're just going to see it improved over the next couple of years. You know, the product lines are going to expand, you know, there's going to be, um, more opportunities to buy the product. Um, so like I said, other than that, I, there's not a whole lot more I could say than, you know, than I'm just pleased right now. Nice. Um, do you think the uptick in the charcoal sales, you know, has something to do with this whole like quarantine thing that, you know, 100%. everybody's home and, you know, they can't, they can't, um, obviously the, the competitions every weekend are, you know, yep. canceled. So guys just practicing <clears throat> their cooks or just yep. cooking in general, you know, you get the regular weekend warrior who is officially at the weekend seven days a week, you mm -hmm. know, and obviously you need the, the problem at that point is you can find yep. the charcoal, but can you find the protein? Yeah. So I think that, you know, the first week or so of this stay at home thing, you know, when it started kicking off, uh, because I'm still on the board, you know, with NBBQA, um, we had conversations with guys with Weber, with, you know, every, everybody that you can imagine in the industry, um, you know, rec tech, you know, any of those guys. And we had all the same discussions, you know, because we were, we happen to be, um, at the last uh, trade show of the year, we're going to call it the year, which was HPBA down in New Orleans and um, ran a lot of these guys in the industry. And, you know, they're going, Hey man, you know, oh, what's going to happen, you know, and cause we didn't know what was fixing to go down. And, um, you know, and I, same conversation with everybody. I said, I think this is the time that we just, we focus on positive social media. We're going to have to take advantage of the opportunity that people are going to be stuck at the house um, they're going to have to start cooking, um, you know, and now a couple of weeks, you know, we're, we're five weeks into it, six weeks into it almost. And, you know, the trends that we're seeing right now is, okay, proteins are back. We're able to go buy this stuff. Um, the charcoal sales again are, are way up. Uh, grill sales are way up, especially on inexpensive grills, you know, anything under 400 bucks. Um, so everyone has decided to cook. They're cooking for their family. They're cooking for their neighborhoods. In the neighborhood I live in right now, as soon as it's about six o'clock ish or the sun's fixing to kind of go down, everyone's at the end of the driveway. Mm -hmm. Everyone's walking. Everybody's riding a bike. You know, there's, I mean, I don't think there's a home repair left to do in my neighborhood. <laughs> and I think everybody's knocked all that out. Mm -hmm. um, but the one major deal is, is, and I do it a couple times a week, is I would cook. And I would cook for whoever wants to come and eat, you know, and we just send stuff with them, you know, send it home. You know, we have neighbors who are asking about, you know, hey, you know, do you think you could do this for us? You know, Easter, I cooked uh, like 10 turkey breasts and we just took them around the neighborhood and, you know, handed them out. Um, but it's, awesome. it's that thing. I, I think now we're 
we're we're pushing people back to where we were about 10 years ago, maybe even more to where, you know, people did a little bit more with family. And, you know, and again, there's, you know, everyone's been kind of on this barbecue trail anyway. You know, everyone's been more enamored with barbecue uh, just because social media has gotten so much stronger and um, everybody's cooking anyway, you know, but now people want to take the time to perfect it a little bit more. And, you know, and they, they're, they're, this is the time they're passing these traditions on to kids right now. You don't know what impact this is going to have 10 years from now on these kids who are just anywhere from, from five to, you know, 15 years old. These kids now know how to cook, yep. you know, which previously they didn't, you know. And I think that that's one of the biggest impacts that we're so proud of in the industry is we're going to be able to see that we've just extended barbecue business for another 20 years. Um, I've always told people, you know, I said, if we skip one generation on teaching them how to barbecue, um, we'll lose it, you know? And I think this has just solidified the fact that, you know, they're going to have to continue to do this. So uh, business isn't going to hurt. Now it's going to hurt some smaller businesses who don't have the ability to produce a bunch or, you know, that type of deal. We already see that, especially in a lot of craft barbecue houses. Um, you know, those guys aren't ready for this. You know, those are guys who went week to week, you know, and, you know, that type of deal. Um, but again, like I said, in the, in the broad aspect of this thing, um, the industry is going to be really good for a long time. Nice. Um, Joey, uh, Bill Purvis from uh, Chicken Fried Barbecue. Yes, is, Houston uh, boy. He's, uh, he's asking, who has the best cooks, the IBCA or the KCBS, in your opinion? So that's a, that's a catch-22. So, again, we've got great cooks in Texas, IBCA guys, um, Gulf Coast guys. I mean, there's, there's more than one sanctioned body in Texas. Um, but there are some guys who, again, they ventured across and go cook KCBS, and they, it's, you know, all that. It's like asking you, what's the best barbecue? You know, I know 20 places that I love to eat, but there's – 10 places that I like to eat meat at, you know, there's one that I like their tea. There's one that I like their, you know, their coleslaw. Um, but I, when it comes down to designating, you know, who's the better cooks, um, it's been kind of a level playing field. You know, we had the world food championships over the last couple of years, which have mixed KCBS guys and IBCA guys. So they've had the opportunity for both of those to cook each one of those sanctioned bodies. And guess what? The, the Texas guys did great in KCBS and the KCBS guys did great in IBCA. So it's kind of a mixed bag. Um, but when you get down to it, um, you know, I, I think that it's a, it's a tie. I mean, to be real honest, I mean, there's, there's guys who just will never cook IBCA and there's guys who will never cook KCBS. They just took pork away from us on K on IBCA uh, like a year ago. You know, and they was a voted thing that they wanted no more pork, you know, as far as pork butt. But our deal was, is it just had to be pork. They could have taken a pork butt and cut it up in steaks and grilled it and turned it in. And that was good enough to, to qualify. But guys just wanted to focus on the three meats, which is great. The only problem is, is you qualify to go cook the jack, the royal, the, you know, any of those. That's that one protein is going to kill you, you know, so being a diverse cook. I think is more important than being able to cook three meats really well, you know? So that's, that's where I'll leave that at. Awesome. Mikey, you got anything? Well, uh, the clock, we're running out of time here. You got a lot, lot final question. I'm good. I, th I think he covered, I think he covered everything. <laughs> Joey, you made this real damn easy on us. We didn't, yeah. we, we, I think we asked two questions. <laughs> well, well I tell you, I've, I've, I, I spent a lot of time talking to a lot of individuals. And, and like I said, and, and the biggest thing is I have so much information that I want to share. Um, and, you know, and, and like I said, I mean, I think that the pertinent information that we get out of all this is, um, you know, everyone who's involved in this does it because they love it. Um, Barbecue is a thing that you're either going to love or you're going to hate. That's it. Everybody's got to eat. Um, you know, if you're single, 
you'll probably wind up finding somebody, you know, because of your cooking, you know, type of deal. I mean, if you're, you know, it, it, it's just, it's crazy how this thing, when I say, you know, I put hashtag barbecue fam on pretty much every post that I ever do. And the reason for that is, is because I do truly believe this is a barbecue family. And, um, you know, our biggest thing is we want to bring everyone together. You know, you want to know secrets from Iron Mixon. Guess what? He's one of the easiest guys you can ever talk to, you know, and a lot of people don't understand that they can't, they can interact with these people. Uh, but everybody's making strides to make that more possible. Cosmo's doing it with his Q club. You know, we're doing it with our, uh, barbecue league. Um, you know, go out there, you know, if you want to meet somebody, reach out to them. Um, there's, everyone is more than willing to help, you know? And, uh, but like I said, guys, I surely, surely appreciate this opportunity and uh, look forward to doing it again. Oh, for sure, for sure. So <clears throat> where can uh, everybody find you social media-wise, uh, website, whatnot? Huh? So really and truly, uh, my big deal is Facebook. So uh, Facebook, it's basically Guadalupe Barbecue Company or straight under me, under Joey Machado. Um, and then uh, the one thing that I've gotten into, I mean, we do Instagram and, you know, all that other stuff. It's, it's pretty much all under my name. Um the other thing that I've gotten into is TikTok, and um, we have, you know, and it, I've told everybody if they aren't doing it, they need to. That's going to be the future. Um, but like I said, it's uh, social media. You can catch me anywhere. We post almost daily on stuff. Um, as a matter of fact, I've got to do uh, uh, steak videos tonight, and um, we'll do photos and all that other stuff that we'll use for posting. Um, but like I said, just – I hope that uh, everyone will follow and, you know, have a great day. Awesome. 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 Joey. Joey, thank you again uh, for taking some thank time you. out uh, to join us. This was awesome. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you all. Y'all have a great day. You too. You, you too. too. All right. We'll see y'all. Take care. Bye. Oh, what an interview, Mike. What an interview. Yeah. I was getting nervous there for a second. I'm like, uh, what time is it? <laughs> so so much. Yeah, that's the thing. I was looking at the clock. I'm like, oh boy, we could we could we could we could definitely get a, do a part two on this. But yeah, uh, but yeah great, great guy. I mean, awesome. great guy, great family. Um, you know, go get some um, blues hog charcoal and grab some blues hog barbecue sauce too, because you know that stuff is honestly it's amazing. Oh, it's incredible for sure, for sure. Uh, I'd like to give a quick shout out. To Lennon Jeff of the Barbecue and Baseball Podcast. Uh, boys, thank you so much for having me on. It was an absolute bat blast getting me to uh, stroll down memory lane with uh, my father and my grandfather on a couple base early baseball games. And uh, that is coming. That episode, I believe, is dropping on May Saturday, May 2nd. So go check them out at the Baseball and Barbecue Podcast. Uh, great guys. Um, uh, bounce back from baseball and barbecue. Great mix of it. The history of the game, history of barbecue. New guys, old guys. Great time. Great time. What are you looking at? You. You sounded like you were going to say something. No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> then in that case, that's it for this week, folks. We. <laughs> We'd like to thank you for joining us. Catch the audio wherever podcasts are found. Catch the video on Facebook and YouTube. On YouTube, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Um, all our past episodes are right there at your fingertips. On social media, find us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram at Pit Life BBQ. Questions and comments, please send them to Pit Life BBQ Podcast at gmail.com. Like always, folks, please subscribe, like, rate, and review. Hit that share button. And uh, obviously, hope every all once again, hope everyone's staying safe. You know, stay in. Don't go out unless you absolutely have to. You know, fire up that grill and uh, you know, get get some smoke in the air for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, folks, that's it for this week. Until next week. Keep the Keep smoke rolling. The smoke rolling.
The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.